Welcome to Thy Kingdom Come. Coming up on today's episode. The presiding bishop of the Methodist Church, Ghana, the most reverend Titus Kofi Awachiprat, delivers a sermon on the theme, Rekindling the Methodist Evangelical Heritage, the Methodist Evangelist Quota. If we become continually and persistently disobedient, what happened to the church in Jerusalem could happen to us. Persevere by remaining faithful to the Master. It will never be easy. And in Methodism Today, we bring you the annual conference and capacity building workshop for heads, chaplains and regional managers of Methodist institutions. Please stay tuned. The Methodist Church Education Unit, Ghana, has organized its annual conference and capacity building workshop for heads, chaplains, and regional managers of Methodist institutions at the Nat Hostel Edreso in Kumasi. The conference was on the theme, Rekindling the Methodist Evangelical Heritage in Mission Schools, My God, My Work, and My Home. The education unit of the Methodist Church seeks to see every child receives quality education to the highest level possible. Education received is based on academic excellence and the development of productive skills which will lead to the development of individuals imbued with honesty, integrity, Christian values, professional and work ethics. The unit works with the Ministry of Education and the Ghana Education Service to provide good quality basic secondary technical, vocational and tertiary education. This year's event started with an opening ceremony which includes the lay president, Brother Lawyer Kwame Ejapon Boafo. Bishop Kumasi Daosis, the Right Reverend Christopher Andam, the Very Reverend Mrs. Nana Esi Danyame, Directors of Education, Connectional Directors, among others, gracing the occasion. Bishop of Kumasi Daosis, the Right Reverend Christopher Andam, representing the presiding bishop as the guest speaker, expounded on the position of the church in education. What should we do as managers, heads, and chaplains? We need to go back to the tradition of creating an environment where Christ reigns in our schools. The beginnings of school are included as part of the syllabus religious studies and moral training based on scripture. Where the fear of the Lord is instilled in people to students in being godliness in people is important if you want to produce desirable individuals who will contribute positively towards the socioeconomic development of our nation. The chairman for the occasion, Professor Seth Opuni Esiama, lay chairman Kumasi Diocese, expressed his delight and the insight he has received. The Very Reverend Mrs. Nana Esi Danyame, General Director of the Methodist Church Ghana Education Unit, expressed her hopes for the coming year. We have met to appraise, set targets, and form plans which will guide our actions to provide holistic education in our connectional institutions. As a Methodist Church, what do you want in our school? One of the sessions here is going to meet us ahead, especially when this with this fee free and it's intended and other things connected 
with the coming year. We will brainstorm, come up with a paper that there will be uniformity across all our institutions in the connection for smooth and effective running of our schools. Not compromising excellence, but we will make sure that the students that pass through our schools do not go only with certificates, but people who have been trained, imbibed with integrity, honesty, to go into the world of work, making sure that we have trained them in the fear of the Lord. Students from Kumasi Wesley Girls Senior High School in a poetry recital reproduced the training received from the Methodist Education Units. Arise! 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 For a soul awaits sight. Oh, you liberals of the West, inheritance of the heritage of my world, why are you glued? To the center of the vineyard. Why? Why are you glued to the center of the vineyard? Behold. 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 A soul is stuck at the bottomless pit. With melodious tunes from the choir, participants gracefully enjoyed the song, Your Grace and Mercy. My friends in Christ, your theme as carved out of the church's annual theme, talking about the quota of the evangelist, lead me to touch on some portions of scripture that I have been using since the middle of last year, my travels both in and outside Ghana on the subject of reviving or rekindling our, in fact, the theme should have read, our Wesleyan heritage. And my reason being that when the church became known as the Methodist Church, we lost touch of some of the beginnings that grew the movement in England. But when it was the way the, the, the Wesleyans, God working through the Wesleyans and their friends, Wesleyans and their friends, those who followed them in the revivalist movement in England, the church was outward going, as your president mentioned. Outward going the sense that John Wesley, when he became a preacher, in fact, John Wesley was reluctant to go out and preach. Being a good um, Anglican priest, he knew that the preaching was only done in the parish church where he had been licensed to preach, not outside. His friend John Wakefield said to him, John, you are powerful in speech. You can convince people to receive Christ. They are not coming into the chapel. Why don't you go out? So John Wesley reluctantly started preaching outside the chapel by the prompting of his friends. Wesleyan Methodist Church had never been come into the church. It had been a church that went out and brought in. So by rekindling our evangelical heritage, I do not use the Methodist heritage. I use the Wesleyan heritage, the basics, the beginnings, that caused the growth of the church. I'm looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6.
Now, in those days, the number of disciples was multiplying. There arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, It isn't desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Mark that. We'll give ourselves to prayer, ministry of the word. Christ had started appointing persons with responsibility identified work to be done in the body. So one, the apostles were appointed to pray, lead in prayer, teach, minister to those who were being converted. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, the Holy Spirit, Philip, Prochorus, Prochorus, Nicanon, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. And the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. Great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. Now, when they became obedient and focused on the work assigned them, they saw growth. Number two, they didn't take for themselves responsibility which the Lord hadn't given them. Our task is to lead in prayer and pray, teach and preach. Prepare you. The beginnings of the Christian church. There are other ministries to be done, to be performed. We don't have those gifts. But there are some among you who are baptized with those gifts. The collocation is those among you of high repute, of wisdom, and of the Holy Spirit. So the cast lot and the seven deacons were elected for the daily ministry, caring for food, water, clothing, other things. So the apostles prayed and taught and led the group and prepared the group for a movement. Then the deacons, the servants of the deacons, their duty was to make sure that people were clothed and fed and cared for. So ministry in the church is beginning to develop. First, the apostles were the leaders. Second were the deacons. Now, when the apostles started going around and they were preaching and teaching and planting churches, they appointed elders or superintendents or bishops. The bishop wasn't the big man in the primitive church. The bishop was the elder or the caretaker in the absence of the apostles. But there was a historical accident. When Rome became authority of the then known world, the leader of the church in Rome, the bishop of Rome, became powerful. And so the role of the bishop, he had taken about two or three heddle jumps to become the leader. The authority of the Roman Caesar was behind him. Not directly, but because Rome was an authority in ruling the then known civilized world, the church in Rome took the first place. And their caretaker became the leader of the church. And now we have bishops, we have cardinals, we have popes. But the initial thing they did was to appoint people and assign them other ministries as the church was growing. A little bit from our own history, when 
the Methodist Church Ghana was to become autonomous. Before then, the British Conference was planning Conference for West Africa Methodist Churches. Ghana, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, and the Gambia become a conference, West Africa. Then nationalism also started to grow. Citizens in those countries demanding for independence from Britain. And so the church realized that when countries become independent, they cannot belong to one conference across West Africa. So the idea was then, let us think about raising a team of ministers that will be able to handle our church. When Ghana becomes independent and we become autonomous, the authority will lie in the hands of Ghanaians. And conference, British Conference needed to add to the number of the then ministers, 10. Number 10, just 10. So the idea of the catechist order was introduced. So the theme came, go and preach the gospel, baptize, what for? My first year, what for? To bring the Methodist impact for social action. 1916, 1917, that was the theme. 1617, for church growth. And next year, sustaining our growth through effective stewardship. The same theme, go, make disciples of all nations. So the hope and prayer is, this theme will revive within us, starting from the ordained justice, the need for people like you to champion the outward march and the revival of the inside membership. When the inside membership is revived, no one will ask them to leave the pews and go out. If we become continually and persistently disobedient, what happened to the church in Jerusalem could happen to us. What was it? Herod started persecuting. Got all of James, martyred him. Stephen martyred. Then he grabbed Peter, put him into prison. The disciples scattered for fear of being killed. That was not the intention of the Spirit. The intention of the Spirit was, I ask you to go out. What are you sitting down for? Get up. Go. We have the story, classical one, of Philip. The Bible says, and the Spirit said to Philip, go to the Gaza Strip, where Hamas is reigning supreme these days. Gaza Strip. Today's Gaza Strip. That was the seat of the Philistines. If the Hebrews were not able to enter Palestine by that short route, but rather went down to Sinai, the peninsula, and came up that way, it was because of the presence of the Philistines. Moses knew the area. He knew the terrain. He knew there were enemies there. They were not fighting group. Those who were leaving Egypt for Cana were not a fighting group. And so if they met the Philistines and there was war, they may either return to Egypt or be scattered. So Moses led them down the peninsula and up again before they entered, crossing the Jordan and enter because of the Philistines. The Lord said, go to Gaza Strip. What did he see there? An African from Sudan, the Bible says Ethiopia. Ethiopia at that time was referring to anybody with a black skin. But this man from Sudan, down below, below Ethiopia, come to worship in Jerusalem and was returning. And there, Philip met this man and received his conversion. Sweet words. Who is he talking about? Himself or somebody else? Then Philip opened the unwritten gospel. To the, to the eunuch and the eunuch immediately believed and were baptized and were saved. So when we go, because Philip had the message 
And Philip had been anointed by the Spirit. Philip had the message to share with the Sudanese. He believed. Here is water. I am ready. What prevents me from being baptized? Go down from the chariot. He was baptized. Bible says, and the Spirit took Philip away. So number one, your quota is the responsibility of the Methodist Church Ghana. And that is to ensure that you are given the proper recognition fully and also giving all the equipment and the tools you need. When the recognition is formal and every bishop and every superintendent minister and every second minister is made to understand and accept this, then you will be well resourced for the task for which in the mid 90s Eighties, the Lord gave this vision to Professor Dixon and others to get this movement going. So your first quota is our responsibility to ensure that you are given the recognition and you are well resourced for why this ministry was brought into being. Pray for your ministers. Second quarter is you remaining faithful to the Lord. Remember, the church didn't call you. The Lord called you. Remain faithful to him because in Ephesians chapter 4 and verses 7 throughout, if I just touch on 11 downwards, it says, Ephesians 4, 11, and he himself gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. So if you have received the calling to become an evangelist, then your responsibility wasn't given you by the Methodist Church Ghana, but the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Because he said, when he was taken up he took captivity captive and then he gave gifts to men, to the church these gifts were giving. They are the apostles, evangelists, pastors, teachers, and so on and so forth. So if you remain faithful and persist that one day there's going to be a breakthrough, we will begin to see the gift God gives to the unordained to build up his church. And it is a teamwork with the, let me use this uh, classical word, the cultured, the trained, the lawyers will say, um, learned brother. Given to the learned, the cultured, the trained, the trained to disciple the lay for functions to be carried out by the lay. The Bible says, we are to pray and teach. We cannot stop that and do what you are asking for. So from among you, it takes some. The deacons, the seven, Stephen and others, were not appointed by Christ. Christ gave the order when the apostles were eleven. Later on, they would elect Matthias to replace Judas. That election and the prayer and laying out of hands made Matthias equally ordained and commissioned by Christ. Then they in turn appointed the seven by the direct action of the Holy Spirit. So I see it that when the church became obedient and brought your order or your ministry into being, it was the Holy Spirit asking us to do this for growth. 
So the third thing is, know your quota is knowing your duty as a circuit or society or district uh, as an evangelist and carrying your functions through under the theme giving. I've mentioned three things. One is ours. The church, recognition, and then to equip you. Second, you yourself are called for the work of the evangelist. Your work entails risks and you operate under harsh conditions. Persevere by remaining faithful to the master. It will never be easy. Three, know the defined role you are to play and carry that through. But with the theme in mind, we are to make sure that we revive our evangelical heritage. Fourth and finally, your quota is to ensure that the church not only be, continues to grow, but is revived. It's revived. Periodically. Revival meetings are not money-making meetings. We don't organize. In fact, no human being conducts revival. Revival comes through the spirit whenever the church is obedient to the prompting of the spirit. So what we do, the noise, week-long noise, rolling on the ground, spreading this thing, and anointing, we are encouraging ourselves to remain faithful. But proper revival brings in those not touched yet. They come in. Look again at um, Acts chapter 2 and verse, verses 46 and 47. Acts 2, 46, 47. What is written there? So continuing daily with one accord in the temple, teaching, breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and, sim gladness and simplicity of heart. That simply means they shared a very warm fellowship. Then 47 says, praising God daily and having favor with all the people. Then daily, what did the Lord do? Added to the number. So the fourth, your fourth and final slot or quota is to ensure that on a regular basis we are reminded of our faith and we keep the faith going. Main faith. What do we do? The so-called revival. The revival brings the Lord, brings the rabbi himself. In the late 30s, early, late 30s, early 40s, a few old women met in Wales Swansea in Wales, UK, and we're praying regularly that the Lord will maintain or sustain church membership and for growth. Old ladies, they will sit around fire, drink tea, eat biscuits, and pray Reg on a regular basis. Others joined in. Then from nowhere, the Spirit came down mightily on the Christian churches in Wales and was a tremendous revival. Those were the times when the prime ministers were Christians. Parliamentarians were Christians. They would never sit in the parliament and enact a law that a man could marry a man, a woman could marry a woman. But when Christianity lost its grip on Britain, all these old women who were praying were gone. The booklong people who became heads of the churches were not interested too much on these prayer meetings, debates, and books, and lectures, and long degrees, and certificates. The church began to dip. So when politicians of the tradition came up, and they knew no Jesus Christ, they forsook the Bible. That is what is happening now in their countries. 
their clothing up edges. Remain hopeful, for the Lord is still in charge. Amen. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Thy Kingdom Come. This program was brought to you by the Methodist Church Ghana. For your prayers and counseling, call us on the numbers currently showing on your screen. You can write to us via the address showing on your screen or email info at methodistchurch.org.gh. You can also visit our website www.methodistchurch.org.gh We entreat you to subscribe to the Wesley channel on YouTube for more updates on our programs. God bless you.